TV, we're the people that make Speedy Tree. Uh, anybody here for the second time? They liked it so much? Yeah, the AV guy in the back, Joe did. Okay. Uh, a little bit smaller crowd this time, but we'll, hopefully we'll still uh, have a good session here. Um, so I'm here to talk about uh, Speed Tree and Unity 5. And things I want to cover today is what is Speed Tree? A shockingly large amount of Unity users don't know what that is. We're pretty well known in the games industry and visual effects industry at large. Uh, I guess I need to get on my marketing guys about that, but we'll talk a little bit about what Speed Tree is, a little bit of the background. Uh, how does it help to use it? How does it work? And then if you want to try it, uh, how can you get a hold of it? So that's what we're going to cover today. And there's going to be a lot of live demos and a whole lot of hopefully not too many PowerPoint slides. All right, so a little bit about Speed Tree's background. Uh, we've been doing AAA games since 2002. Um, these are some of the upcoming games that we're pretty proud of and, and can't wait to see on the next gen consoles. Um, our official full-blown games product is a modeling package, an SDK that does simple things like get vertex buffer data out of our tree format files, but it also manages high-level forest rendering, I mean, culling, billboard batching, wind, LOD, and that kind of stuff. Um, most of that is coming into the Unity offering, as I'll show you later. Um, and there's some along the bottom there are some of the uh, recent releases we've had. So historically, we have a crazy expensive product for games with crazy big budgets. So we haven't had much of a presence in the indie community, and we're trying to change that, and, and going into uh, uh, Unity is one of the big ways of doing that. What a lot of people don't know is that we're also pretty big in visual effects. About five years ago, we decided when the only thing you do is make trees, you better make trees for everybody that can buy them. And we were really game specific. So we're really low poly. Um, you know, we got used in Speed Racer, that movie, just on a happenstance. Somebody has happened to pick it up and use it like, well, if Maybe they need it. Maybe if we try, we'll, we'll get in it. And so we went to uh, SIGGRAPH, walked around, and talked to the uh, visual effects companies like ILM, Digital Domain, people like that. Like, what don't you like about tree modeling? And sort of the upshot of all that was we don't like botanical simulators. We like art tools. And so that's sort of geared the way that we designed Speedtree from then on out. And out of that conference, we got hooked up with uh, ILM, and they were working on Avatar. And they wouldn't tell us they were working on Avatar. But they say, OK, we need to work with you and, and get these things done. And so we worked with them closely over summer. And the day the Avatar trailer came out, they called us and said, you may or may not see your work on the internet today, and hung up. <laughs> so they, they weren't like you know, allowed to tell us what it was. And we were ready, started playing the trailer. And we were like, all right, look for them, look for them. And it was the first shot over Pandora where all the trees, and every one of them were trees we'd worked on for them. So that was a pretty cool thing. And so we've gone on from there to go pretty hard at visual effects. And these are some of the recent movies we've We've been in and TV shows, so uh, we can do, I'm bringing that up just to show that we can do crazy high detail trees or crazy low detail trees for mobile, so we can kind of go, you know, run the whole spectrum there. All right, so what does Speed Tree and Unity 5 mean? Well, a uh, couple key things. First of all, it's Unity 5. It's not 4.6 beta that just went out. It has to be 5, so Speed Tree's not going to be available in Unity until 5 goes out. Um, if you're in the closed beta group, we're going to start selling what we sell then, and then everybody else will get it when 5 goes out. But um, one of the important things to note there is that SpeedTree works out of the box in Unity 5. That means free or pro versions will read SpeedTree files and do SpeedTree things inside of Unity. So it's not just a mesh sitting there. It has uh, LOD, wind, ambient occlusion, collision objects, things like that. So it's a SpeedTree object inside of Unity, and it's free for all Unity users. Um, and so other things we're bringing, we're, we're going to have our uh, modeling package is going to be available. So we have a procedural model modeler. Uh, like I said before, it's much more of an art tool than a botanical simulator. So it's probably more familiar terms you, you would expect to see. Uh, it mixes procedural model and hand drawing. So you can fine tune parts that you, you know, that are maybe important. Maybe a branch of the tire swing is going to be hanging off of or something like that. Uh, we do wind. And our wind is a, it's the same wind algorithm we use for movies in Unity. And you can use as much or a little of that as you want. So if you can go full-blown wind with a long vertex shader, or you can start backing that off and have shorter shaders and, and less wind effects. An example of that would be, uh, there's two types of leaf motion, leaf rippling where the vertices oscillate, and leaf tumbling where the whole leaf will go like this. So full-blown wind has both. The next one down only has leaf rippling because it's a cheaper effect. But you can pick all that stuff in the wind algorithm. The, um, another thing about the wind algorithm, it feeds the position of the trees, uh, position orientation into the wind algorithm, so the same tree right beside each other will not have the same wind on it. So they'll be totally different 
all the branches will be in different states of motion, all the leaves will be in different states. So you can, that helps you, you know, build a forest out of maybe three different trees instead of you know, having to worry about 300 trees. So um, that works well. Uh, smooth LED transitions is another one, and that kind of goes in with the next bullet on the, on the right, the 360 degree normal map billboards. So when you're modeling a tree in our modeler, you're working, worried about the highest LED, and it automatically generates lower LEDs all the way down to a billboard, which is a 360 degree billboard that's normal mapped. The key to the normal mapping is you can do time of day changes or shoot missiles across them or whatever you want and uh, have lighting affect the billboards without having to go pre-bake them or render different billboards or anything like that. So you can do dynamic lighting with the billboards. And the smooth LED transitions, like our desktop model trees are about 8,000 triangles and they'll go from 8,000 to 5,000 to like 1,500 then a billboard and it's really hard to tell what's going on. We do make a lot of effort to reduce the popping and keep the tree silhouette intact so as you back away from it you don't just you know, see the tree flashing and, and changing states. Um, another thing we have is a branch intersection blending. This is where you want to use tile textures on a tree if you can, so you can walk up to it and still have a lot of texture resolution. If you use an unwrapped texture, you'd have to have like a you know, 4096 texture, and even that would break down on trees. So um, we, we have a technique that lets you take, like say where a branch hits the trunk, you're going to have two problems right there. You're going to have a lighting problem if the normals don't match, and you're going to have a text, really bad texture seam right there, right? So we take that ring where they hit and do a multi-texture effect to sort of eliminate that texture uh, seam right there, and then we match the normal so the lighting matches as well. Uh, and the last thing on there is uh, ambient occlusion. Trees make pretty good ambient occluders of themselves, and so we make a, a pass on the tree so that it ambient occludes itself, which basically means the middle of the tree gets darker, but it's, it's not that simple because you may have a tree that only has leaves on the edge and only those parts get darker. So it's a ambient occlusion pass that stores um, those values per vertex, and they come in inside of Unity and get applied in there as well. So. That's all the kinds of things you get on a tree. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tree from, I'm going to start from scratch with a tree, or not exactly from scratch, I'm going to start early in the process with a tree, model it, edit some things about it, and put it in a Unity scene just so you can get an idea of how that whole pipeline goes. Um, before I do that, just to talk a little bit about how it works. I've got sort of the key thing there is the models in the middle on the left. You have to have a speed tree model. It's not an FBX file. It's not anything like that. It's a speed tree model. Unity will recognize that when you put it in the assets folder, just like you were putting an FBX in there. It'll see it, give you the hold on message, and go through and import it and make all the materials and, and that sort of thing. Um, so you can get a speed tree model either by using our model to create or edit one or buying them off the asset store. Uh, so that's how you get your hands on a, on a speed tree model. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to launch in and show you a little bit how it works. All right, this is the speed tree modeler and there's a special version just for Unity and it says special Unity ready files. So you have to have this version of speed tree. We have dozens of versions of speed tree, visual effects and AAA games and other engines and things like that. So uh, this is the one you have to get. Um, and just to show you a little bit about how it, how it works, you build tree models by combining these circles together in a tree data structure. Uh, each one of those circles has a bunch of parameters over here on the left, like you can see. Uh, there's the ones that govern the spine, branch, if it has fronds, caps on the ends, materials, uh, wind animation, things like that. Um, and each one of these things, you combine them, they all make geometry, and this is how you, how you put a tree together. And if you look over here on the materials, like this is the bark texture on the tree, that's just a TGA. The diffuse or albedo layer, the normal map, this doesn't have a specular layer, it has a detail map here for moss and things like that hanging around on it. You can see the uh, leaf map that's on this tree. These are all just TGAs, and I stress that because people say, well, can you make alien trees? Can you make weird trees? Well, you can make any kind of thing you want because you control all the artwork that goes onto it. So you can make your own TGA files, and you can make your own meshes to copy around for where the leaves are. So um, there's nothing really hidden. The only, branch, the only geometry we actually generate from scratch are the branches. So, um, everything else, and even those can be meshes you bring in. You can hand model like a hollowed out trunk and have that adhere to a spine and then grow branches off of that. So you, you have a lot of flexibility. Um, before I start, I'm going to tear this tree down a little bit and bring it back up, but before I do that, I want to talk about uh, the LOD system. So I'm going to back up from this tree, and it's using a screen space area LOD system like, like Unity does right here. And I don't know if y'all can read it, the triangle counts right there, 79, 76, 7,976. And as I back up from it, 
you can see the LED slider on the left will start going down. And it just switched 5,697. So right there is an LED transition. It's really hard to see when you're back, you know, far away from it. And then it goes down to 2790 after that. Then after that, it would be a billboard. So I'll zoom back in and go through that process. So that's a pretty gradual transition through the LED states of that tree. Uh, and now to sort of pull the curtain back on it, it's hideous when you look at it up close. I mean, but, you know, so you see leaves dropping out, leaves getting bigger, branches go away, like if I hide the leaves, you see the branches, all the branches with the trunk disappear during that process. But as, you, as it's doing in, in the game, you don't really notice it. Um, one interesting thing about this approach is it doesn't require any extra texture memory. It's using the original textures on the highest LOD. So the leaves that are there get bigger, they fill extra space from the ones that went away. And you can control the points at which they, uh, like they're getting bigger. You can have perimeter ones grow inward toward the tree to fill up the middle, or in middle ones grow out to fill out the perimeter. You can control all of that kind of stuff if you want to. Every one of these uh, little circle objects over here has an LOD group with, with parameters that you can configure. But you don't have to model each discrete LOD. You just edit parameters about the transition, not, oh, I gotta go make the next LOD, then make the next LOD. It doesn't work that way. All right. Um, Next thing I want to do is I'm going to show what it looks like when you mix hand drawing and, and procedural modeling. So I'm going to tag the trunk and level one here as hand drawn objects. So you can see the little hand icons showed up on there and the tree changed a little bit in the background. What I'm going to do is kind of start from scratch. So I'm going to break that link so there's no geometry in there anymore and put it back together. And now I'm going to start drawing. I'm the lead developer of this app, which means I'm a software engineer, not an artist, so don't judge. What happens next? So I'm going to start drawing. As I start drawing branches over here, you can see that a lot of these details are procedural. I didn't draw, obviously, I didn't draw all of this. So you can have as much or as little of it be procedural as you want. But this is good for, especially in highly art directed environments where the art director will come in, you think you've made the best tree ever, and they say it sucks, and then you just. <laughs> You got to go back, and if you're doing it like in Max or something like that, it's a huge problem. So here you can, uh, you know, kind of quickly adjust and, and and get through those kinds of things. Uh, something to note is like I didn't draw those knot holes; those were procedural. But I can click on it and move it around. This is different than most procedural algorithms, where it kind of vomits out of tree, and if you don't like it, you make it vomit out a whole new tree. In our system, you can edit individual parts and randomize parts. Like I can randomize, in this case, maybe I just want to randomize that set of leaves, wherever they are. There aren't that many of those, but I can randomize them. They're all changing around. So you can randomize a whole tree. You can randomize individual parts. Anything that was procedurally generated, you can click on it, and you can provide an offset value to the value the procedural algorithm set. So if the procedural algorithm said that branch is eight feet long, you can click on it and make that eight feet plus one and a half feet and make that one branch a little bit longer. So um, you have a lot of flexibility. You're not really tied down to what the procedural algorithm wanted to do. And um, I'll turn wind on on this guy. Uh, this one already had wind, you know, wind values that were pretty decent in there. Um, so it doesn't need much tuning. But if you did want to tune it, um, there are options. There's a wind wizard, which lets you answer a few questions about a tree, like roughly what kind of tree is it? Uh, what conditions do you want to be in? Do you want to favor speed or quality? Uh, what do the leaf nodes represent? They're all leaves in this tree, but they could be fruit. They could be apples or oranges, lemons, things like that, which behave very differently. They don't ripple at all, but they tumble very kind of slowly, whereas a leaf will be high frequency and things like Spanish moss, things like that. So you have to answer a few questions like that. Then it'll go through and set reasonably appropriate wind parameters, and you can click on the fan and, and change branch motion, leaf motion, gusting behavior, that kind of thing. And all that comes into Unity and just works inside of Unity. You don't have to touch it again in there. It's governed by a wind zone inside of Unity. So you can set the strength of the wind, the direction of the wind, the how the tree responds to the wind is all tuned in here. Um, I just, what I did there was I computed ambient occlusion. Let me uh, go through that a little more. OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an ambient occlusion pass on this thing. So right now, it's just sort of basically lit. And if you look at. Um, the ambient occlusion visualization, it's all white because there's no ambient occlusion on there. So if I go to compute ambient occlusion and say OK, it grinds away in the background. And so now you can see where it's added basically a vertex color 
based on how much light any one of those vertices happens to, to reach, uh, how much light reaches that vertex. So essentially it's darkening the parts of high density leaves and things like that, and it works like down around the roots and things like that. You can, uh, you can adjust these parameters. I can make it uh, brighter or darker. It's really more of an art than a science. It's not like it has to be physically accurate here. It's just what you think it ought to look like. So you can tune that kind of thing up the contrast so it's you know, bright on the edges and really dark in the middle. Um, but that adds a lot of depth to a tree. It also is particularly useful in a, like a mobile environment where maybe you don't have directional lights. Maybe you just have sort of a very artistic look to the scene. You don't want to suffer that, you know, that extra penalty. Then you can use an ambient occlusion. Like if I turn on... Um, you know, a um, no shadows. It still has depth to it, um, so it's it's a nice technique. Adds a lot of depth to the trees. Um, one more thing I want to show. I talked about branch intersection blending earlier, and I'm going to clear the ambient occlusion real quick to show this off better. So this is a good example here, where where this knot hole or knot is 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 meeting the trunk. You notice that there is a it's there's no hard seam right there. If, as I move it around, you can kind of see it. Well, let me get that thing to snap in a little better. That actually does have a hard seam. Let me pick one that doesn't. Okay, that one doesn't. So as I move it around, you can see this junction is very smooth. And as you move it, you can sort of see the multi-texture effect going on, but if you, if you leave it still and then look at it, this lets you walk up to like the base of a tree. You don't want to do this everywhere because it is a multi-texture effect, which means the pixel shader is looking up two textures. This lets you walk up to the base of a tree and not see a bunch of hard seams in there, maybe where the roots hit the trunk or the low level one branches hit the trunk. And then if up in the canopy, you probably don't care, turn it off so you're not doing you know, extra pixel shader work up there. All right, so that's um, kind of a quick look at what the modeler does. I'm gonna compute ambient occlusion on this guy again. And now I'm going to save it to put it inside of a Unity scene. So I'm going to say save as and go find my scene. And I've got kind of a blank, empty scene just to put this in as a, as a, a demo. And I'll make a new folder here, uh, demo. And I'll save the tree. You'll see a message here where it says uh, rendering billboards. So it actually made the billboards for it when I hit save. And I'll close this and run Unity and open that scene I just saved this into. We should see a hold on message because it saw that I saved a scene in there. There it goes, and it's importing the tree. It's gonna tell me I've got no, it found normal maps and to fix them, so you hit fix now, so now the normal maps are appropriately tagged as normal maps. And to um, just show you what, it, what you get when you bring it in here, this is what it created. So there's the actual tree file that I made and you can see other things like the uh, texture atlas, the billboard atlas, the texture atlas. So it took all the leaf maps and the cap textures, anything that, that doesn't need to be tiled, throws them in one texture map so they can be rendered in the same draw call. Um, so it does all that stuff automatically. You can see there's the uh, normal map atlas, the specular map atlas. Um, and then it set up a, a material for each of the draw calls and each LOD. So you can back off effects in lower LODs if you want to. Um, you can take branch intersection blending off in lower LODs if you want to. Um, so that's what you get when you import a, and you import a speed tree. And I'm going to make a couple of quick modifications. We do uh, uh, something here called hue variation with a, with a hue color, where you can vary the, uh, the color of the albedo layer based on where it is in the scene. This is another thing like, like having unique wind based on the position, having a unique uh, slight tint to the color based on the position helps to break up the monotony of a forest, with the same, but still using the same tree asset, so you don't use extra memory for that. Um, so I'm going to sort of shift it toward that color and regenerate those materials. And then to put it in the scene, uh, you can place them manually or you can paint them. So I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is just place one manually, drag it in here, move it around. You can see as I move it, the, the shaking there is it's, it's this position changing of the wind behavior. So as you move it around, you'll see little things in there because I have a wind zone in the scene already. Without a wind zone, there'd be no wind, but I've got a uh, wind zone here. I'm going to lower that strength just a little bit. And now I'm going to hit play, and we should see a, a windy tree that I can walk around and look at. And you can see the ambient occlusion. I probably did a little bit heavy-handed there because I was just making sure you guys could see it. But it's, uh, so there's the tree in Unity, and as I back up, it's going to do the LED states as well. Oops, sorry. 
where we go, there it is. So it's undergoing LED transformation, so it's uh, just like it did in the modeler. And uh, that's how it looks when you place one manually. Uh, you can also paint them on terrains, which I've already got a few other trees loaded here. So I've got a, a conifer ready to be painted. So I'm going to up the density, maybe shrink the brush a little bit, change the random height. So this goes through the terrain painting system like anything else that you paint on terrains in Unity. And if I go over here and start painting, we should see some conifers show up. Maybe go a little bit higher on the density. Back a little bit so I can see it. So there we are with a bunch of conifers. Hit play again and there we go. So that's what it's like to get speed trees in there and it's what it's like to populate them in the scenes. Um, and so that's just to come and overview of what the pipeline is like. It's not terribly difficult. Um, go back to the presentation now. Talk a little bit about what, what we're offering, how you get it. Okay, so what's, what's coming up? First thing, we're gonna give out free sample models. So you can put them in your scenes, play around and decide whether speed tree is right for you or not. Um, you'll be able to get those off the asset store and probably off our website as well. And we're going to sell models and environment packs on the Unity Asset Store when uh, Unity 5 comes out. And uh, we're also going to sell subscriptions to the modeler that I was running at $19 a month. And so anything you make with the modeler or anything you edit with the modeler runs forever. So you can subscribe for a month, do a bunch of tree stuff, cancel, use the tree as long as you want. And if you decide you need to edit them later, you can subscribe again, edit them, or you can stay on subscription. We certainly hope you do. But, uh, it's, uh, it's up to you. There's no minimum time. The minimum time is one month. The, so you don't have to, uh, um, you can use as much or as little speech remodeling as you need. And that's going to be available when the pre-order betas go out. That's when we're going to start selling the Unity modeler on our store. So if you have access to that, that'll be the first time you can get a hold of it. Uh, if everyone else is going to be when Unity 5 goes out to the uh, general audience. Um, and I just covered that first part. I do want to talk about uh, support. Uh, one thing we like about the subscription system, and we're, we're kind of new to the subscription game, we're, we're just sort of dipping our toes in this water, but we update the modeler frequently, and as long as you're on subscription, you get the latest version. So this lets us put out bug fixes quickly. If Unity makes a big jump and we need to jump with it, something about our format, then, then everybody on subscription can get that and, and, and stay up to date, and we don't have to worry about who needs to pay an upgrade fee or anything like that. You just, you always get the latest as long as you're on subscription. And we're going to have a dedicated uh, forum at speechery.com. Uh, that's probably the best place to ask questions like, how do I do, how do I make this kind of tree with speed tree? Um, the best place to ask, uh, speed tree is doing something weird in Unity, it's probably on Unity's forums, and we're going to monitor those as well. Um, but you're more likely to get someone else in the community to answer your question about Unity on the Unity forum and come to us for, for modeling questions. And that's it. If you want to get on our mailing list uh, to get early access, it's unity at speedtree.com. And uh, we're going to have somebody downstairs uh, the rest of the day today. So if you want to come by and, and see a uh, you know, more in-depth demonstration, you're welcome to do that. And uh, I guess I'll take questions if anybody has any. Yeah. You can load a bunch of trees, but I don't think Unity lets you paint more than one at a time. So you can put in trees in that list of trees, but you have to click on, I'm painting this one now, I'm painting, painting this one, one now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Two questions. It's on both. Okay. And the second question is, can you talk about the differences between the trees you would get versus in the Unity Asset Store versus what you made in the Modeler? Is exactly the same? Or is it the oh, they're the same. All the trees in the Asset Store will be made in the Modeler. And I've <laughs> That's two times I've forgotten to talk about the asset store trees, so I'm really glad you asked that question. The assets, when we put a tree on the asset store, it is a uh, um, sort of a crazy amount of tree data for that tree. Like if you buy a white oak, you get hero, desktop, and mobile resolutions in all of the seasons that matter. So a white oak would be summer, fall, and winter. A Japanese cherry tree would be spring, summer, fall, and winter because it has a flowering version. Then we have old ones, young ones, we have leaf map maker files. When I showed the, uh, the leaf map that was on that tree I was making, we have speed trees that made that shape where it has individual leaf textures, which are very easy to make. It's kind of hard to make a convincing multi-leaf texture that looks good. So we have 
little speed trees that help you make that. And we have a, a function called export material that will take what you're looking at in the viewport and write out a leaf map, albedo, normal, and specular layers. So we have those files that go with all of our tree assets. So a typical um, tree model we put on the store will have anywhere from 15 to 25 models in it covering all kinds of variations and things like that. And they're going to cost you know, between 20 and 40 bucks. And then they'll go on sale, and that's when you guys will buy them, and they'll, none of you will ever buy it when it's full price. So we, we know how the game works. But uh, um, yeah. So those models that we buy from the Atlas store, we, like, we take those and edit them in the model? Yes. Frame yep. Yeah. Um, can you edit after they've been painted and it'll just update? Yeah, it, yeah. It's like, it's like um, the Unity monitors those asset folders, and if you save a tree, in fact, if you double click it in the asset folder inside of Uni, it will launch the model, you edit, save it, it will give you the hold on message and, and crank it all back out. And I can't believe it's happening, but my partner's asking the question. Yeah. Can you randomize trees you buy Yes, you can randomize trees you buy from the asset store. Anything else? Okay, well, I appreciate you all coming. Oh, one more. Here we go. Uh, just a thank you for doing this twice. I was able to make it the first time. So oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. It's a great opportunity. Yeah. No, the Unity model is, is, is restricted to the Unity pipeline. Okay. We have other products that export things, but you know the Unity one won't. Okay, okay. thanks. <laughs>